Uh, you know, the, the whole, uh, all of the newsroom operation, uh, the circulation department, our payroll records, uh, we are, we, we, you know, we are really handicapped as a business uh, and as a newsroom. Uh, and you know, we've lost an, in, an incredible amount of history, uh, things that just are irreplaceable. And we've lost, all of us have lost uh, personal effects. One of our staff members ha was well along on a book and he had given me the, the printout to read. It was in my briefcase. His copy was on his computer and I abandoned the briefcase on my way out the door and he abandoned the, the computer. So uh, he's out all of that work. So a lot of past, a lot of potential is gone. I, I saw your headline yesterday uh, that said, come hell and high water. What's your, what's your headline today? You know, I, I don't know because the, the, uh, the guy who's doing the, the front page is in St. Paul and uh, the paper's here yet. We see the pictures, Mike, and, and obviously those give you some sense of what's going on physically. But we can't feel what's happening there among the people. Can you give me any sense of it? We're still standing. Uh, we're still standing, and we're and we're facing the right direction. We're facing uphill, uh, and and we're we're starting to put our lives back together, uh, individually and as a community. Uh, uh, we're going to make it. It's going to be very very difficult. Uh, I just heard uh, from you actually that I'm not going to be back in my house. I'm not going to be able to see my house uh, for three weeks. And that's very very hard. Uh, it's very hard to think that uh, I'm not going to be able to, to have a place really for, for that long. And then to, not to have any idea of what it's going to be like and what we're going to have to go through to make it, to make it livable. So it, it's, it's hard. Well, Mike, I appreciate you joining us this morning. These are long days. I know it takes, uh, you have enormous logistical problems to overcome to publish the paper, and I appreciate both you doing that and you being with us. Uh, you talk about the indomitability of Grand Forks and great institutions like the Herald. Thanks for being here. Good luck to you. Thank you. This paper looks like it said uh, Clinton will see the devastation, and he did get a bird's eye view of that today. But then uh, quickly turns to uh, submerged land. Uh, here we're flying over around the area of 32nd Avenue South, and we are heading uh, east toward uh, 24th Avenue, I believe. And this is 24th Avenue South right here, I believe. Again, uh, some areas look high and dry, but uh, the access to them uh, is dory. I believe these are the pictures shot by Aaron Klonbeck as he flew with the... Would that be accurate? That appears to be uh, some of what we looked at earlier today. Mm -hmm. Aaron was flying in the, uh, as a pool reporter uh, in the... Uh, Helicopter that was up at the same time accompanying the president along his flight. Now we get into the areas where there is more water. I was up on the roof of WDAZ today to, to catch a glimpse of the, uh, the presidential helicopter flying by and uh, got a picture of that uh, for my flood scrapbook, I guess you could say. Uh, he, he will have uh, quite a story to tell once he gets back uh, and talks to members of Congress uh, about the flooding situation here in the Greater Grand Forks area. They circled the city a few times and uh, got quite a view from the air. We uh, may uh, uh, mention it at six, did haven't mentioned it here, but five cabinet members with the uh, president today. Uh, quite a, a show from Washington, D.C., almost clearing out the top level of government to uh, come to basically what they would consider tiny Grand Forks. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously one of the top five uh, population centers in North Dakota, but uh, to them probably a very tiny community, although the president did say he'd never seen anything like this in a community this large, having to have evacuated 90% uh, of its residents. And on the Grand, East Grand Forks side, basically 98% of its residents have left East Grand Forks. Um, we certainly uh, know that we take uh, some complaints that we have not shown enough of East Grand Forks uh, and that's what some of these images will show you. Uh, today, unfortunately, most of our coverage foc focused on the Air Force. As uh, many of our crews, uh, you can't ignore the president coming to town. That's why we appreciate being able to bring you some of the ABC feeds. Those people in town have been very nice to us, and uh, hopefully we've helped them out some, and they've helped us out. And uh, 
that allows us to do some of the other things as we try to cover the president with our uh, small staff here at WDAZ. Okay, we're going to uh, maybe change tape machines here. Uh, the agriculture industry in this area, along with the state mill and elevator on the North Dakota side, uh, that appeared to be uh, fairly dry in some of the earlier pictures that we have seen of that facility, and so did the uh, American Crystal, but obviously without water, American Crystal is under probably having trouble, I believe they are on the city water system. Again, some homes in the outlying area of East Grand Forks. So. And roads flooded here. I'm not even certain which road that is. But yeah. as you take that perspective, that horizon, and realize that you're looking to the distance for miles, and all you see is water. I wonder if that's a mobile home. Those two, uh, it looks like two pieces of wood in the middle of a stream, in the middle of your screen and there. They very well be. Uh, because they look very big in relation to the trees that mm -hmm. are very near them. And this is the uh, unbelievable devastation in some of the lower lying areas of our community. Barely uh, rooftops, barely sticking out of the water, some completely submerged in that just murky, dark water. Again, East Grand Forks under a mandatory evacuation order and uh, understandable too. We look at these, sometimes we've seen these the second or third time, and it's still it's hard to imagine that this is really our community that uh, looks this way. Uh. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, when Iowa, the flooding in Iowa here a year or so ago, uh, we had seen uh, houses actually torn off their foundations and floating downstream, and you usually think of it as something that happens somewhere else, but never here. You see it on the national news, oh, that would never happen here. But now we are making national and world headlines with our devastation. We've also here. taken a lot of calls wondering why, uh, why they don't go farther to the west. Uh, we have, do have some video that's taken uh, farther away from the river, but uh, certainly the major devastation when you're flying along the, with the president, the officials are wanting to show him the very, very worst of it all. Uh, we, he flew directly over our studios as he headed east. We heard the the copters quite loudly as we were bringing you uh, live coverage of his uh, arrival and, and subsequent departure onto the helicopter to take this tour. Certainly those officials want to take him down by the river uh, where the uh, devastation is worst. Uh, he can see as were all of the homes that were uh, at least up to their basements, if not a little deeper, right up in the middle of the one solitary rooftop still. Again, the president heard the, the, uh, the stories of hardship from uh, members of the uh, communities of Grand Forks and East Grand Forks and city officials, two very moving stories. Uh, Grand Forks Mayor Pat Owens uh, choking back tears as she was telling the president uh, that he is uh, the bright star, the hope that they're looking for. The images tonight, we thank you for joining us. We'll bring you continuous flood coverage throughout the week. Thank you for joining us on News Center 8. Good night. Just done a spectacular job cutting through red. Doing its job, it stemmed the flow of water into the southwest corner of town, saving two schools and hundreds of homes. But east of Washington Street to the river, it's still transportation by jet ski or boat. Spirits are once again crushed with a look at the total destruction in the Lincoln Park area. Certain areas seem to be going down and others seem to be still flowing strong and and stand about the same. If the destruction of downtown wasn't enough, the putrid smell of sewage and fuel fills the air. And when the floodwaters touch your skin, it instantly is burning and itching. <laughs>